Um, let's start off with just a very brief overview uh, on some terminology. Um, when we reference new cards, we are strictly talking about these blue numbers right here. These indicate how many new cards that you want to do um, in a deck. And that is limited by going into the settings, which I just clicked into, and then selecting how many new cards you want to do per day. And this is a number that you can play around with. Um, I would personally suggest not messing around too much with the other settings uh, as they are set up by the people who made Anki and they were set this way for a specific reason. Um, in the same way, then you can also change the number of reviews you do per day. Um, and then the number that's really going to dictate that is this one right here, the maximum re reviews per day. And you want to have this set to a number that won't limit the number of reviews that you're going to do uh, total. Because if there's one thing that you want to make sure you do, it's that you do all of your review cards, which means all of the cards that um, you have done before. These are just a new card is converted into a review card after it's been completed on the first day. Um, and like this is the way that we use the program is that we make sure we did our reviews, all of our reviews every day. Mm -hmm. And so that would maybe be like I'll just like reviewing all the different themes. As the year progressed, you would be reviewing some cardios with your endocrines, and then you would be throwing in some GIs and hemonks still, and then you would like be learning renal. Mm -hmm. So you'd still you would learn your renal cards for that day, and then you'd review all of those cards plus your the renal cards that you've been chipping away at. Um yeah. So that's number. And then also one last thing about the review cards. We also, and I think we both did it this way, we switched our match max interval to 120, right? Mm -hmm. 120 days. So four months. So that means that, so as it was set previous to this, it meant that you, it's possible that you would not see a car. You, you could graduate. You could advance a card so far that you would never see it again. But the way Romeo and I did it was that we maxed it at 120 in the sense that even if you got a card very early on in the year, say you started off with Neuro, you would still have to get cards about certain type of tumors in the brain, even if they were super easy. And the max they could go out is four months. I think it's pretty self-explanatory though, but... So I, that's your preference, but I know some people that did one month, which is borderline insane, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, some more important housekeeping things with managing such a big deck. Um, so what we did is we went into the browse video. You can get here simply by pressing the letter B on your keyboard. Um, you're going to click on the big overarching Zonky step deck. And what we did is we then went ahead and selected every card, which you can do by holding shift and then clicking down, essentially sandwiching the first card and the last card, and clicking this button here, suspend. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with what suspending means, that just means that when you choose to study your decks, these are the cards that the program is going to hold from allowing you to study. So, and they show up as yellow, and they have the parentheses around um, under like the do column. Um, and for example, this is just what an unsuspended card looks like, comparable to a suspended card, which is everything surrounding it. So how that's going to show up is, if you remember, we had it set at 20 new cards per day. But I just suspended the whole entire deck. So you're going to have nothing that you can study for the day. If you click into, for example, Endocrine, it says, congrats, you've finished this deck for now because it thinks that you've already completed every card that you can. So essentially, suspending hides the card from the program so that it won't show up. 
Um, the purpose that this serves is so that you are only doing cards that you have reviewed from some primary source, whether that's first aid, pathoma, BRS, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, or, yeah, or wars and beyond, or whatever resource you're using, right. so that you're not jumping into new territory. And your first look at the fact is on a zonkey card, which I don't think is very useful. Um, so, I mean, there's that. So that's the suspending of the cards. Um, yeah. So, for example, just to put this really quick practice into motion, because this is honestly what you'll be doing, I think, for most of the year. Say, for example, you watch the first section in Pathoma on endocrine. Yeah, so, like, the, the part of this is, like, so you would look through here and you would go, okay, where is the last fact uh, at least the way I did it was like what was the last fact that would be about it this is not a good example but like you would click and you're like okay I learned everything about salivary gland tumors and you're like okay good and you're done and then you like unblock everything above from it and so you unsuspend it right it's like one of the methods of doing it right. so again you sandwich the cards you unsuspend and boom these are the 50 cards that you were watch the video of Pathoma on, and then you go into the deck, and you go ahead and study. Now, as you can see, we only have the max of GI cards set to 15, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I can see everything. And let's say I set it to 100. And now, here are your 50 cards that you can study um, based on the Pathoma video you watch. So again, you know, the whole purpose of this is that it's both gonna reinforce what you just watched, and then it's going to make sure that once you've done that card, that you will never forget that fact going months ahead. Um, so that when dedicated time comes around, you don't have to be scrambling to learn that information that you originally had learned, say, months ago at the beginning of second year. Yeah, now is a good time to actually kind of jump into that idea of... Um, when you see the card the first time, being able to like recognize it the second time. And this is actually a bad example. Um, but this, okay, for example, is a card that you might see in your future and you might read it like this and it could have key, identif key identifiers in it that might give away the card without you actually knowing the fact. So it would be your obligation to then go through the cards at a later date and kind of edit things out so that you are not going to be able to say like apis ulcers are just canker sores, but you will remove this and you uh, use other the actual fact that the question is asking. Mm -hmm. Because you could just say this honestly could have just been like this and then this. And then this could have been all deleted pretty much. Or you could have deleted this and try to use this as the fact. So, I mean, that's just like one of the ways you have to be honest with yourself. But that's editing the cards. A few more things about editing that I would probably like to say. If you wanted to add more photos of aphthous ulcers, you definitely can. And by clicking E, which is E for edit, you can get to the card window here and drop in more photos. You can also edit the card here. So if I didn't really want to see the words canker sore anymore, I could just delete it, and when I close it, this is the card that I'm going to see. So it's a little bit harder for me to recall this fact and make you think a little bit more, and not just saying that, oh, canker sores are aphthous ulcers. Um, I do this also, and I'm not sure how much. I did this actually a ton for all of my cards, um, but I added like tons of graphs, pictures, and other extenuating facts about this. So maybe I would like do this and then, I mean, this is like a pretty simple one, but like um, if there's like other things about like treatments or risk factors or like viruses that cause this, which is not the case, but with those things, I would throw those maybe sub facts in under the uh, additional facts column. Mm -hmm. Any, anything else did you... Uh, did you edit a lot of the cards? Or? Yeah, I mean, so it's just like a nice little addition to um, a specific card. So again, in action, you know, here you see the card is talking about 
what causes aphthous ulcers. Um, and maybe you wanted to add just a little extra fact that you saw in either UWorld or Kaplan or another um, resource and just say resource here just for the sake of example. And again, the way that comes up is like, it'll be an additional fact that you can read after you've gotten the card right. Um, and that's essentially, that's more for you. And it just kind of depends on what kind of learner you are and whether you think you'll actually benefit from those extra facts being included in the card. I didn't do too much of it, but Chris definitely took the time to go ahead and edit a lot of his cards with those additional facts. And that's because he actually, you know, he, you know, read it and at least felt like he was getting something from it. Right? Yeah. And, it's, and I think that at the end of the day, it's not like this is the right way to do it or not even the ways that we're doing it are like the right way to look at the reviewer cards, but they're just like, as long as you are putting in the time, like you'll get a uh, return on it. So one of the first things that we both felt that we had to do was that, for example, um, when you do start building up review cards, uh, as you go through Zonkey, what you'll find is that uh, the program will automatically mix like new cards with review cards. And that makes it tough to learn the new cards because you've also got these random facts from days before being thrown in there. That kind of, um, at least for us, it kind of threw our, threw us off a little bit and I actually think it made you less efficient um, when you're going through it and honestly when you start building up like hundreds and hundreds of cards the last thing you want is to have things that are going to slow you down so we both decided that we wanted to do our review cards first and then move on to like the new cards based on whatever video that we watched or whatever section that we were studying um, and that's a pretty easy thing to do, and it's a little hidden actually. But if you go to um, if you go to tools, and then you go to um, preferences, uh, you'll find that uh, in this this little box right here is where you know the default is to mix new cards and reviews. But then you can decide that hey, like show me the new cards after the reviews. Um, or you can also decide when your next day starts. Chris here says it's at <laughs> F4 um, in the morning, or four hours past midnight, uh, which is might be a useful thing to do for you night owls out there, such as myself. Um, and what that means is, if you are doing, you, you finished all your reviews, and you woke up whenever you did, and you finished your reviews, and you finished however many had you had to do for the day, and you started doing your news and you get through like half of them and it's like 1159 and you're in the library studying the next card you click after that the deck will reset and all your reviews will pop back up so you have to like redo all of those reviews and like I, that happened to me a bunch of times now it's like this is ridiculous so i set it to four in the morning so that i would be able to finish my reviews and i do a lot of my new cards without losing that precious window that I would get back to having to do reviews. Mm -hmm. You'll understand this more if you're using the program and you have like this little precious window if you put news after reviews, which is what we chose to do throughout most of the year. So then the last bit of mechanics, um, we added a bunch of add-ons also and it kind of made stuff easier. I like looking at statistics this thing at the bottom right here is a heat map. Um, these are all add-ons though. So these are all the add-ons that I used uh, throughout my review process. Some of them I added later, some of them I didn't. Um, so as we, whoops, as we, add-ons, as you look right here, so we have the, the review heat map, which is the thing that you're noticing at the bottom of the screen. The top one automatically show answer after X seconds. Um, that's a program that will force flip the card for you, a review or a new card mm -hmm. after like 10 seconds or whatever. Right. This kept you, kept me honest after I was like doing a bunch of cards throughout the day. Um, super low yield, but I changed the button color so that like good was green and bad was red. 
Um, card info during review, that's, we're not going to talk about that. Um, I tried to make custom keyboard shortcuts and that didn't work. <laughs> that was kind of aggressive. Night mode is like a different way of like looking at the screen so it becomes dark. I liked it for some things and then like when I was doing my sketchy uh, decks with like a lot of the pictures, it didn't like look that well. The time box will go to the bottom of one of the screens for the cards and will let you know how long you've spent with the cards. And that's pretty much that's pretty much the. Do you have anything else that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so those are the pretty much the main ones that I used. Uh, you can go, like you can. So the way you would look at it is you would like browse and install, and the code you would just put in, and then you can browse the code at like Anki Online and uh, get the code kind of that way.